It's 11 o'clock. What's going on? Hello, uh, or good morning, should I say, uh, to everyone. I'm Hugo Fernandez, the host of uh, What's Going On uh, here on LaGuardia Web Radio, WLGR. And uh, my guest today is William Kelly, recently retired. And uh, I pulled up here uh, so I'd have this for you to get it right. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, I'm usually better at, at, at this, William. Yeah. You're the former, uh, oh, you know yeah, what? I got it. That, now I know director. what's going on. Here we go. Yeah, you're the, you're the filmmaker, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, editorial manage, managing director of marketing communications. And uh, William is retiring after 45 years of uh, service here at LaGuardia. Which I, and I remembered because when we sit, it when we were in LPAC and they would have that shot of uh you know everybody that's retiring you would be one of the last guys going up there i remember uh did you get a 45 year uh, pin i think i did i'm not sure i i usually wouldn't go up you know because i was either filming it or something like that <laughs> so <laughs> i remember bruce brooks going up when he, i think he got 30 a 35 year pin or something and he was he grabbed his back like you know oh that's my Lombago. uh yes but i, I so we, we talked a little bit about the format, uh, and I don't even know, you. I haven't done an ex exit interview in a while because folks usually try to like sneak out, you know, quietly, you know what I mean? They'll send out the email, I'm retiring today, thanks. But you gave us a lot of, you gave us a lot of room and you've also been very generous to come on the show uh, today because, uh, you know, it's past your retirement date. But I wanted to give you a little uh, chance to kind of uh, talk about yourself and your background, by the way, for those who didn't know, that video that we started the show with uh, is part of uh, an ongoing series that uh, William has done for for direct for direct oh, to Vimeo. No, right? actually, it's a YouTube. There's a there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, it's a series of lessons, martial arts lessons with squirrels. And that just and that was a, came about from your own martial arts practice. And noticing just how Absol crazy the squirrels Absolutely. are um, in Manhattan. You know, I, I I would go down to the the, the East River Park and, and and work out. I mean, I've been studying. I've been doing uh, karate for about thirty years, and um, but you know, I, I like to train outside as well as train inside of the dojo. So I would get out and uh, work out in the park, and then I would see these extraordinary behavior of of squirrels, and I would tell people. I said. You won't believe what this squirrel did, and this and that and so on. And they'd say, "Yeah, prove it." I, they didn't believe me, so I said, "Okay, fine." I'm, so I started bringing a camera, and that first episode uh, is an example of of what was going on. And then uh, Susan Lydon, who used to be the uh, vice president uh, of uh, marketing of, of institutional advancement, and also the direct director of uh, um, right. marketing communications. She had the suggestion. She says, well, you know, that's great. That's great. You have one camera. So you should bring <laughs> another camera so you could start the cut. I said, great. And anybody knows editing, it's, that's what most of the time is taken up with, uh, with filmmaking. But I did it. And, uh, and uh, then the uh, series developed. Uh, uh, there are 11 episodes now, but there are many, many more on the way. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, Lydia Khan, who, who just got her MFA in uh, digital media. I always forget what, they, what, her, what her degree is called. But, uh, you know, she's, she, we, we always talk about how you can't be your own editor. It's very hard to be your own editor, but you do a pretty good job. <laughs> 
So, William, tell us a little bit about your background, like, you know, where you were from, some of your studies before before coming to LaGuardia 45 years ago. Well, I, I actually, I, I was born in Kentucky, uh, but uh, that's because my father was on an army base. My mother was on the army base, so my father was in the army and so on. But I was raised on uh, Long Island uh, in the town called Amityville, the Amityville Horror. Wow. Um, How appropriate! Yeah, exactly. A film, film town. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but no, that's a we won't go into it as a tragic, terrible thing. But uh, right. but it's become yeah one film after another. In fact, there's a new one coming out. I can't believe it. So um, and then uh, I went to uh, college on Long Island, uh, a college that you're familiar with, Hugo Dowling College. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I worked at Dowling for a couple of years. I, lo I loved it. My wife actually said, like, oh, they really treat you well out there. Why don't you go work? And then, of course, they closed. <laughs> right, right. So, um, but... Uh, you, so, you, so you, what, did you get a four-year degree from Dowling? Yeah, I got a four-year degree in, in the arts, um, and uh, which was actually quite good. Dowling was originally an experimental college with all kinds of programs in Europe and so on. And that's, that's what appealed to me. It was like, you know, alt uh, at the time. Um, but uh, well, it, but it yeah, I thought they had like, they, they started out like, cause it was an air fort. It was like, uh, it was an air base, right? Or it was an airport. And they, did they, didn't they train like pilots and stuff? Like well, that, that was, yeah, that was afterwards. Uh, that became a big oh, money, money maker for them, you know, but, but it was nice right. about the colleges. That's right on the Conaquat river. And, and I loved uh, it. And it was uh, in an old Vanderbilt mansion. So it was actually quite right. beautiful. So, but that said, uh, then I moved into uh, New York uh, because I got tired of uh, spending a dollar, many dollars on the Long Island Railroad to uh, come into New York to see films. Carnegie Hall Cinema, Bleecker Street Cinema, the heyday of uh, repertory cinema in New York. Um, and, uh, and that was an education in itself. And then, um, in those days, you could, you could, you know, get get a job. So I, I went through like five or six jobs, finally ending up uh, working for Lori's Book Company, uh, which uh, they ran the Pace University bookstore. And they were opening, they had just gotten the contract, a uh, new contract for opening the bookstore at LaGuardia Community College in Long Island City. So I started uh, in 1977. So in 1977, I became co-manager of the bookstore, and that lasted a couple of years. Uh, so, so wait a minute before you if you go on. Was was the bookstore where it is today? Yes. Was it always there? That was the, well, that was the first time. Yeah, the, the college, the the main building had just been renovated. Uh, so um, the M building, the M, Hall. Yeah, yeah, the M building, Shanker Hall, had just been renovated, and we we were. You know, that was the first uh, time that uh, that space was used as a bookstore. So wild. Yeah. So you start, so you work, so you, and you're, you were managing it, you said? Yeah, Co-managing. Yeah, we had co-managers. Co-managing. Yeah. So, so. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and then uh, while we were doing the bookstore, we, uh, in conjunction with financial aid, uh, uh, we developed um, what this was called as a book voucher program. It allowed students to... Uh, to purchase their books on credit, basically on credit, uh, based on their their Pell Awards, B E O G in those days, uh, and uh, that that was highly successful because it allowed students, you know, who, who didn't have the cash to, to, to get to obtain the books uh, for their classes, and that lasted for a couple of years. Other colleges emulated the program, and then it was found to be illegal <laughs> or something like that. I don't, <laughs> But uh, so it had to be stopped. But it was actually a really good program. It was great for the students, and it was good, good, good for the for the uh, for the bookstore company because they, yeah. they were getting they were selling the books. So yeah, I re I remember there was always this issue of they had to wait to get the money before they so so a, a lot of times they couldn't start with the textbook, but then it got to a point where they were allowed to do other things with that money, and. The, so that's yeah. That was the end of wanting to buy books. Yeah, but uh, but but yeah, it was really a smart thing because it allowed the students to have the books on the first day of classes. Right. Um, and then uh, next thing I know, the the you know I got hired by the school. Uh, I was a writer already. I had published my first uh, articles in Film Quarterly, uh, and then they needed a writer in, in uh, financial aid. Uh, to write uh, and, uh, and then eventually come out with a financial aid newsletter. 
uh, and so on. And then, um, so we did that. Were you like meeting people through your role there? Like you would meet people from the college in that role? And that's how, or you just would, how did you find out that they were offering? Did they oh, come no. To you? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, we were, we're the, the, uh, the partnership in terms of the book pageant program got me to right. meet, you know, all the people in, in, in financial aid. Right on. So, so that worked out uh, very well, including my, my, my future wife. You know. <laughs> so, oh, really? Yeah. So, um, so that, that worked. And then, uh, and then, you know, when I look back on it, the, my, my whole tenure here, well, I should say, I should say, not to use the word tenure, but my run here, uh, it, it, interestingly enough, uh, spanned, uh, the tremendous uh, evolution of technology uh, in, in the last 40 years. Because when, because when I got here, when I first started working, there was nothing but typewriters, um, copy machines, and terminals, dumb terminals that were hooked up to uh, mainframe computers in, in, in Brooklyn, U, uh, UAPC. Um, so when we were putting together the newsletter, it was just a matter of uh, you know typing things out and cut and paste on a, on a page and you know using whiteout or strips, I figure what they call them, and then uh, reproducing them on a copy machine. And then eventually, uh, uh, personal computers came in. And, um, and I'll never forget, uh, they would hold classes that this is a personal computer. And, and the, the school started off with Xerox personal computers, CPM systems. They had eight inch floppy drives. And that, you know, it was kind of exciting. Um, and then eventually, a couple of years later, then uh, IBM came out with the XT and, and the, the school changed to that. But, but there was a really interesting transformation during that period. So that also affected the way we put together the newsletter. And the next thing I know, they told me, um, you have to go learn this thing called the Macintosh. So I said, what? <laughs> I said, no, you know, I said, OK, uh, it's in the corner of the, the dean's office. Nobody's using it. So, and supposedly it's it's uh, good for desktop publishing. That was a, a term, a brand new thing at the time, desktop publishing. So yeah, I went over to, it was the, the dean's office in the uh, Sony building, which is across the street. It was called the Sony building. It's the library building right now across the street from uh, Shanko Hall. And there it was, it was a big Mac, I think a Mac two. And it, there was no manual, there was nothing. And I said, oh my God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> And this is before the internet, so you couldn't Google anything. And I, but I, I yeah, turned exactly. it on, and because of the user interface, which I wasn't used to, I was used to DOS. Within the, by the end of the day, I said, "Hey, this is great. This is fantastic." And uh, I never, you know, I, I, I haven't looked back. I mean, I, I, you know, of course, then Windows came out later on, and so on. But uh, that was great. And the next thing you know, I'm taking uh, graphic design courses, and and we're, you know, we really cranked up the. Uh, the effort uh, in terms of uh, desktop publishing, uh, and yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's funny, kind of funny because when you, the way you say that, I mean, I, I, I got into college about the same time you were moving into your role at LaGuardia, and I remember that as you know, you had. I, I, I went, I went into my drawer because I was looking to see if I could actually find a floppy disk. I've got like a, a six inch or something somewhere and uh in my thing here but i'm not going to find a course in time for the show but uh yeah you would you would type on one you would save your your stuff on one and then you had another one that was like the operating system and you'd pull that out and you'd stick in the spell check yeah that was that, that's right say. that was that was that was the first ibm machine they had the two floppy drives before the before yeah, exactly. the xt the xt had the hard drive so yeah yeah so you've yeah but it's like you know it you know, because technology, you know, if you think about the printing press and where it was at at that time before computers, I mean, you have seen a, a one hell of a revolution yeah. it, as far as technology in uh, in your lifetime. Oh, absolutely. I think I'll, so, so, uh, so, so, to, to, so where did you go from yeah, there? So, so I, your, your desktop publishing and still in financial aid? Well, well, no, actually, it was I moved out of uh, financial aid officially and was working for student affairs. Uh, so we okay. did, so then we were, we were publishing all kinds of material for the, the division, uh, and, right. and enrollment management. Uh, so, you know, and, uh, next thing you know, Ed, Edward Hollins is working with me. 
uh, and we had our own little operation, DTP, you know, desktop publishing, student affairs, DTP. Uh, and then uh, I think when Gail, Gail Mello uh, became president, uh, she moved us over to marketing and communications. She thought it was the smartest thing to do and made sense to me because uh, you know, we were graphic, doing graphic design and publishing and so on. And um, so we went over there, uh, the fifth floor uh, in the E building and uh, working with uh, working for Bill Freeland. And that was that was a pleasure to work with uh, Bill Freeland. And um, and then uh, again, because of technology, you know, I had been making films on the side, you know, my own films, you know, and, uh, uh, you know I started making in college, just at Dowling College, I started making films. Uh, and um, so I'd been making films. I mean, eight millimeter, yeah, eight or millimeter. Video. The first one was eight millimeter, then and then I was doing. Uh, um, super Super 8, and then uh, at Dowling they had a television station, and they would be shooting video with big, big Sony cameras in those days. Um, but um, and then so I went over to marketing communications, and to get back to this uh, evolution of technology, uh, the um, um, nonlinear editing uh, had just become affordable. Uh, prior to that, with uh, with uh, a number of programs. So prior to that, you had to have an Avid system, which cost a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. And actually, I had already made it. You know, I had made a feature film, and you know, we, we edited it on Avid. It's called Roughneck or Bronx Reggae Western, and <laughs> that was that was an interesting experience. Uh, I did that. I took I took five weeks off uh, from my job, and we shot that and got it done. But that's a whole story in itself, so we'll get into that. Um, <laughs> it, it, it actually, trauma picked it up, you know. So, uh, and, and trauma. Who did? Trauma, and we, you know, Tom. Uh, you know, you know, Tom is, uh, you know, you know, loves trauma, and we we were we were trauma for a while, but then you know things happened with my producer and so on. So, uh, but uh, and then I got into a fight with him, and uh, I recut the film and called it comeback. So there were two different versions floating around. <laughs> you know, it, did, it played on uh, BET. It played in, you know, in, in Europe and China, and you know, eventually I got some kind of money, but never, never, never broke it. You were big yeah. in Japan, yeah. Yeah. as they say. So, so, so I had that background, and then when I when I was moved to uh, 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 marketing communications, it just so happened that nonlinear editing uh, came out. Uh, affordable nonlinear editing came out with its Final Cut Pro, a Premiere, and I think Premiere came out first, and then and then it was Final Cut Pro, and uh, for a thousand dollars or something like that, or maybe even less. Uh, and then uh, you know they decided, hey, we could start making videos, uh, and that's what we did. So you know, so then you know, I basically managed not only the, the you know the, the some of the designers in terms of the gra I still did that graphic design, but uh, increasingly, we were doing more and more and more video until all the way up until the pandemic. And that, you know, and now I'm retired. So there. <laughs> but, and, but you guys are also responsible for. Yes. F photographing. Right. Photography, everything that happens at the college and, too. And, video. And, and actually, you know, again, relating to the photography, you know, the, the just just in terms of uh, Digital photography started coming out around that time too, as well. I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, you brought that up because uh, we were sw switching. But in the '90s, we were still using film cameras. Uh, but by the time it was like 2001, 2002, we started moving to digital cameras, and it became a lot easier to not only store uh, the, uh, you know, the the, the, the images, uh, but to work in Photoshop on the images. So that that was great. Yeah, again, I always tell the story. I mean, when I graduated from graduate school, I knew how to make a photograph any way, any way that anyone ever had made a photograph. And that and this was like the early 90s. And even at the time, we had been exposed to, uh, you know, the early Photoshop. Kodak was experimenting with it in this place they had up in Maine. And we had gone to some workshops for that stuff. But, you know, I was I didn't embrace it. You know, like I would have probably been the guy like you, you know, when they sent you over to the to the Macintosh and you loved it after day one, I would have probably like, 
you know, complained and, you know, eventually yeah. they put me back on the DOS. But, uh, you know, and so I came to it about the time that it fi everything got figured out, which was like you were saying, not only the, the ability to, to save it, but the ability to make a, a physical print yeah. that rivaled, Absolutely. you know, the silver print. I mean, I think that was that was the, what they whatever they call that the tipping point, whatever it is the you know or the, I remember when Brett Einan would talk about the bell curve of tech. Nah, you know we were always like going up the hill with e-portfolios, but by the time you get over here, then you, you know everybody's on board. But uh, I try to keep up. Uh, you know, one of the things I that I always liked about your area was that you know a lot of our students ended up working. Uh, working there, yeah. and actually, a lot of the photo students, like uh, I mean, two Christian with a K, and Gianni are two that just come to to mind right now. How did how did that piece uh, become part of what you were doing? Well, in the, uh, you know, as, as uh, you know, when when we started to uh, you know, um, not only. Was it a matter of covering events? I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the events were actually covered by uh, media services in the library. So, when we one of the things I'm I, I one of the one of the things I'm proud of the most is uh, in terms of my uh, run here is the the branding. Uh, I know it's a nasty word. It was a nasty word at the time, but uh, when when we we came up with a new logo, new messaging, and visual identity, and all that. Uh, it really became essential. We we moved from basically when Bill Freeland was designing, we moved from uh, um, uh, basically uh, an illustrative uh, uh, advertising and so on, and we moved to photography. Uh, and so the need for photography, good photography, um, arose. And uh, in in speaking with Scott uh, Sternback and so on, we we. Uh, we developed a great relationship, uh, and he would uh, recommend certain students. Uh, I think Alvaro was the first one, um, and then uh, it's just been a whole series, and and they've been fantastic. Um, and uh, a lot of the, the 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 huge, probably the biggest uh, uh, um, advertising campaign that that uh, the school has ever done was done after the branding with our, with our new uh, uh, visual identity. And messaging, you know, dare to do more and all that. Um, uh, yeah, we were on. I mean, the dare to do we more. Were... Is that what we talk about? That phrase, dare to do more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you know, there was, uh, you know, the, the need for photography was there, and uh, these, you know, they went out and did it. Um, we, as I say, there were there were quite a few students uh, that were involved, and 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 you know, it just so happened that we did. Uh, Faces of LaGuardia uh, project with uh, the photography program at the same time with a lot of students. So we got to, and, and then we worked. We worked with. Uh, I've got I got four or five students from uh, Louis Lucas uh, uh, class to uh, document uh, the entire process uh, on video, and they they learned how to. I taught them how to, to edit and so on. So that it really became a a great uh, a partnership. Between marketing and communications and the photography, the photography department. So. I, was, I, I, I forgot about Carlos, and I was going to say, did Carlos come? Carlos came out of the the film and TV program, though, right? That's right. That's correct. Yes, he did. He came out of that program, uh, and then he worked for uh, uh, the library, all right? Uh, and and then uh, he, he's recommended, um, and you know, for for position. Uh, working in marketing and communications part time, uh, and then uh, you know we hired him, and Carlos has been great ever since. Uh, he, he he went to City College, uh, he went to Brooklyn College to get his BA after after getting his AA at LaGuardia, and then uh, he went to City College, has got his MFA in, uh, in in filmmaking. So it's and and he's uh, he's there now, and he's he's taking up the reins. So it's uh, you know they're in good hands with Carlos. So Carlos will be taking over. He's taking over the, the video, the, the video portion. The video. Yeah. That, that's great. Because well, one of the things when you were talking about all the things you did, I, I started thinking like, you know, is is did William leave the machine rolling? 
It's, that was a big. That was a big piece. Yeah. No. Cindy. Cindy Bush is also. She's. Uh. You know. Taking over. You know. Uh. The. Uh, the graphic design and. Uh, she's gonna essentially. Uh. Art direct the uh, photograph. Photog. Well. Unfortunately, because of the dire budget situation, we lost. Uh, uh, a lot of our photographers. Um. And. Uh, you know, we're hoping to get them back. But. Uh, so. But. Uh, Carlos. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Ed Holland's, uh, you know, pick up the cameras when when we absolutely need them. So we'll see. Did you have anything to do with the street team across the hall with Gina Taraskevich? N- not not really. I mean, it, well, you know, and when it started, uh, you know, they they had certain street team members assigned to you know uh, senior people, and 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 in the beginning, yes, uh, and then then there's but basically they did their own thing. Um, uh, but there were times when we used them, um, uh, and, and, uh, so that, that was, that was, that was pretty good. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we, we used a lot of the street team as, as models, right. uh, for, for our advertising, which, which was fantastic, you know, and, and they were great, you know. And diversity. Yeah. They're still using the, that initial, uh, campaign whenever the people see, you know, one of uh, one of our students on a big poster, daring to do more. There's still a you, that that's a that's a that program has had a lot of whatever I forget what, what you call that, but it has you know it's it's had a good run. <laughs> Let's go, yeah, Abs- no, absolutely, a- absolutely. It was, it, and then uh, you know when it when it came out, I think it was a, you know, it's almost like what nine years ago, ten years ago, and it, it, there was a sizable budget. We had a really decent budget. It was probably the most uh, spent on advertising. In the college's history and and but it was all over the place it was on uh you know it was the mta it was on billboards it was on uh, in the papers it was it was everywhere on telephone booths and so on so it, it was great it was really great to see that do you think it had an impact oh absolutely i know it had an impact uh not only in terms of um uh enrollment um and people you know recognizing the college uh as a college <laughs> you know yeah, right. But 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 also, no. Yeah. I mean, uh, from from the outside uh, and uh, distinguishing it from LaGuardia Airport. Exactly. Uh, and and um, but uh, but also in, in terms of the fundraising for the um, foundation, uh, the whole, you know, that whole process uh, really had made a difference because in that branding process, we had to interrogate ourselves we had to say who are we and this is a college-wide this is a huge college-wide um uh, endeavor it wasn't just marketing communications but it was everybody a lot of people are involved across across the entire college so we really had to you know say who are we what are we what are we here for that kind of thing and i think uh did a pretty good job yeah people don't understand the importance of the, those kinds of things and i mean i'm involved right now with the this hispanic heritage committee and we're trying to create a center. Right. Uh, and, you know, we get into these discussions and people start writing these mission statements that are like, you know, multiple, you know, it's like a paragraph or two. And I keep saying to them, you know, a mission statement should fit on a T-shirt. Dare to do yeah. more fits on a T-shirt. And people yeah. remember it, whether they agree with it or not. Yeah, right. <laughs> In some cases, you know, because yeah. people feel like they're dare to do more. Uh, as an employee, sometimes, or maybe more than that, what, what, you know, we all know that everybody feels like the, the, but we do a lot at LaGuardia, but, uh, but that certainly has been, and, and, you know, the, the whole thing of like, when you're looking at something, it looks like, you know, it's our typeface, it's our colors, it's our image. I know I gave up years ago making posters and just would call Cindy and say, Cindy, you got time for this? Yeah. <laughs> Cause that way I won't mess it up. Yeah. You know, and it won't get into all of these things. By the way, we're getting close to the to the uh, half hour mark, so I'll just do the, the station break now. Uh, the show is what's going on. I'm your host Hugo Fernandez here on LaGuardia Web Radio, uh, WLGR, uh, and my guest today for a special special time uh, uh, is uh, Mr. Wim Kelly, who is the former editorial managing director of marketing and communications. He retired. Uh, it hasn't even been, what has it been now? Yeah. Uh, has it been two weeks? About that. Well, January 21st is my last official day. Okay. 
So, and I tried to show up for the for the party, but I was stuck in a meeting. I think it was in that. I think it was in that Hispanic Heritage Committee meeting. I was trying to watch both things, but uh, sent my video as a parting gift. Parting gift. The axe thrower. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted it, I wanted it to be interesting, but I didn't. You know, I, it took. You know, my problem is I think and think and think, and then I just execute uh, to redo it. Maybe I would have changed the point of view. That was fine. I like <laughs> it. No, no, yeah, right, right. So this is the part of the show I call the greatest hits, and you've already kind of talked a little bit about uh, something you're, you're kind of proud of. But you know, it's an opportunity for you to to uh, talk about some of the things you feel like you enjoyed doing. Uh, and I'm sure you've got a lot to choose from over 45 years. What do you think are some of the most important things oh, you were involved yeah, with that, at the college? That's a tough one. Uh, there were so many things in, in, uh, you know, in this whole evolution, um, evolutionary process. I mean, we're just working with, with uh, different people uh, across the college, uh, whether it's uh, student affairs or academic affairs or ACE or whatever, whether it's for a program or for a particular program. Um, I, you know, uh, we started with uh, the first, the first uh, big project we did was a uh, video we did was an orientation video for student affairs. And it was actually really, uh, I, I, you know, I look back on it now, it's actually quite good. I, we, uh, I got, uh, because of my background in, in, in film, and I did, you know, it's uh, in theater, uh, I, I had, you know, I knew a lot of actors and so on. So, uh, we we got a bunch of actors, young actors, to uh, to uh, play the students because we couldn't find any students that that, that, that could memorize. Mem at the time, you know, the theater program has come a long way, uh, and uh, so we got them to uh, uh, memorize the script that I had written uh, about about the college. Uh, you know, there's all in helpful information uh, for for new students. Um, and uh, the deal was with them, I would cut their reels, you know, their acting reels, as you know, the professionals of the, you know, <laughs> you know, we had no money, we had no money, but I would cut their, right. cut their reels and that, and it worked out. They were, they were fantastic. And it was actually a good experience, uh, for all involved. Um, and so that, that was, that was really the first thing, but then, you know, then we, we did one thing after another. We did, I, I'm, uh, we did a, a for the uh, we did a video for the uh, uh, office uh, with uh, students with disabilities, with Matthew Jaffe uh, and Joni Nelson, and uh, a lot of the students uh, in, in the program at the time. And I and I thought that was you know, and I look back on it now, it's like okay, there's some primitive shooting and, and, and lighting and stuff like that, but the spirit was there and the information was conveyed very well. Um, you know, now I mean, with uh, with uh, again with technology, especially with lightweight uh, lighting uh, and so on, and also the sensitivity in terms of uh, digital uh, sensors. You know, you you, you, you the the um, production values have increased tremendously. So I mean, you could even see that when the video that I that I uh, that I put together, but with the faces when I when I my farewell video, so you know, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of footage there from way back from 20 years ago. You can see it's not as well lit as, as more recent, but but still we got this. We, we got the, the the information was across and and it was effective at the time. Um, and it's just one after another. Um, but you know, the, probably the most involved. Well, you know, it because it was over a period of time was that uh, Faces of LaGuardia um, project, uh, and because yeah, that was involved because. We planned it out from the very beginning with uh, Scott Sternback and, and Susan Lydon, um, and uh, and got Louis Luca involved, um, and, uh, and 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 you know it, it, I think it went on for months, uh, and then uh, from the from the from the planning stages all the way until the uh, um, the final party, uh, actually even after that because it had a life after campus uh it, it, it toured uh it was in the queen's mall as well uh so you know it was uh, really quite quite uh, an extraordinary uh adventure uh getting to know all the students and the faculty in the, in the uh, 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 uh photography program and so on so uh yeah that that that, that was uh and, and you know you can still see the video episodes, I think they're on the website, uh, and, and they hold up really well. So the students did a great job. 
Um, and uh, but you know, it was one one thing after another. I, I you know, this it's just uh, I look at it as one piece, one whole piece. Um, uh, you know, more recently we were doing videos for you know, if you have 15 credits, you know, you know, do this, whatever. Uh, and uh, there were a lot, a lot of videos. They're working on one right now for uh, uh, LinkedIn Learning. I mean, but in the same mold. So, you know, it's just this uh, incredible evolution uh, in terms of conveying information to the students and also to uh, to the staff members. Um, and uh, it helps bring its communication. Helps bring people together. So, yeah, I mean. Well, and I don't think people realize just how important this is. I mean, I've tried to do some of that work on my own without an apartment, without an area. I did the, uh, and Susan, actually Susan Lydon was helpful, uh, and and Lydia Khan, and also the folks at Film and TV who let me be part of the uh, Thompson Avenue Film Festival, you know, where we did the, uh, the, uh, what I love about LaGuardia contest, the notion there was to build up a series of videos that students could watch as orientation videos. Uh, I mean, in my time here, when I became full time, the orientations were still these physical events, right? Two day events, one day events, people would come in, you'd walk them all over the place, you'd have to have snacks. And uh, I just kept reading about how the the new model is the, vi the the video orientation mandatory. You know, you only capture what a thousand, maybe two thousand students out of a freshman class of five, uh, but a mandatory video that everybody would have to watch. I wish they were, we were still doing those. And I and in fact, Liz, Liz Clark, who's been involved with something around the monies from the CARES Act, had they had about two hundred thousand dollars available, and I said, let's make an orientation video, but I was told. We can't use the money for that. <laughs> so we're back to no, trying to get students that. to do it in an in an interest, but you know, in an interesting way again to capture. Because I think now that we're in this enrollment crisis, we come to this like you talked about this idea. When I go to when I go to college now classrooms to visit, I ask them, "What do you know about LaGuardia?" And they would say, "And these are kids that are in our college now classes." Yeah. We are basically giving them a free class or two towards their college career. And, uh, you know, they say, what do you, what do you mean, the, the, the airport? You mean the, you mean the, uh, that, you know, the, 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 the uh, high school that was in fame, the ta yeah. in the one that's in Manhattan. So us, yeah. Getting across, this is probably for us now that we're trying to enroll freshmen in this, in the middle of this debacle. Mm. is the single how do we if they don't even know we exist how are we going to get them in the door yeah that's but, the biggest challenge right now this is tough this is this is a you know a, you know it's a combination of uh the pandemic and but also uh um just uh you know in terms of uh the way things are changing demographics uh shaking yeah. high school uh populations and so on so it's that was going to happen no matter what but uh, combined with uh, well that that was yeah, happening right you know we had a we were in a we were like in a five-year window of dropping graduation uh you know numbers of kids graduating so we were going to have an enrollment issue we were in we were having enrollment right. issues regardless the pandemic just exacerbated that um uh, so it's a, it's a it's a bad time to lose you <laughs> But uh, I was going to ask you another question. You know, you also have taught because I know you teach for us. You've you and I know the ones I've I've noticed is that you taught critical thinking and you used to teach it through, you know, critical thinking through film. Right. Well, in a way, is that yeah, what you were doing? Thinking, it was actually introduction to art through through film. Oh, it, oh, oh, intro to art. Yeah. OK, sorry. I knew you were teaching because I knew you were teaching something yeah. that that. Uh, I was exposed. So and so, what was that like being, being a teacher? Oh, that was great. Because I know everybody. Yeah, what'd you like about it? <laughs> well, I, I, well, you know, well, it, it started off as twenty-five students, and and then what? I basically, you know, Bruce Brooks had the idea because because of my film background. He says, well, you know, you can teach, uh, you know, your basic design principles, you know, and elements, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, you normally you put up paintings on the wall, you know, and, and or project them uh, and uh, start picking apart uh, a painting and talk about the visual elements and the design principles involved. So you teach them that. Those are the basics. But then there's, you know, there are other things, uh, you know, what, what is the, the whole notion of creativity? What does that mean? That is the relationship between the artist and, and the world and perception and so on. So uh, film is really actually, you know, can incorporate all that. So, um, so yeah, that was, that was great. Um, we, um, so I came up with a syllabus uh, that uh, had, uh, you know, a, a film, basically we'd see a film, uh, it was, you know, it was a, it was a, uh, a double class. It was three and a half hours. Uh, we'd see a film uh, in the class, but uh, after we went over, uh, you know, teaching the, uh, the elements, the visual elements and the design principles. And uh, so the students therefore would then write, uh, initially it was two pages. I'd want them to write after every class. I'd want them to write uh, uh, about the film and so on. And then, and then as the, as the, uh, they kept increasing the size of the classes, and next thing I know, I had thirty-five students. So I, I made it one page, and and it, and it, <laughs> but but in a way, you know, it was it was tougher. It's a tougher thing, right, to make it shorter. You know, as Mark Twain said, you know, yeah. to a friend, I apologize, you know, for for the length. Uh, you know, if I had more time, it would be shorter. So, you know, <laughs> but you know, but but that was it was a really good thing. Yes, you know, and and and, and a lot of it is me correcting directing language and everything with the students, but it was fant it was it was a great experience because, you know, we, we would, uh, you know, none of that uh, I, I, often in the classes. Uh, they had no, I don't think it, there was one class that no students had ever seen a black and white film or a silent film, especially a silent film. So I would, you know, I'd, I'd be showing them uh, Buster Keaton or or um, uh, Louis uh, Bunel, uh, Andalusian dog, uh, and they were like, whoa. Uh, and but yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, for uh, well, surrealism. surrealism no, yeah, we, 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 we would no, we would we would cover you know the, basically you know different movements in art and so on through you know again through film. I mean, and then uh, you know, for example, Antonioni's Blow Up. I mean, that's a great great film to to explore the, the the role of the artist and and reality and perceiving reality or what is reality that kind of thing. So. It was a, it was a great experience, uh, and and then uh, toward the end of you know the end of the semester we would um, I, we would take them to MoMA. I would take them to MoMA. We'd meet at MoMA, and they would be a, uh, you know assigned you know they could choose a painting to write about, um, and that was great too because a lot of the students had never been to uh, any museum, and uh, to see the look on or never left Queens yeah. by the way, <laughs> right. But that was it was fantastic because you could see this wide eyed wonder about, you know, this some of the students walking around and, and you know, it was it, it was fantastic. You know, I mean, what's a helicopter doing up there and <laughs> floating up there right. in the ceiling? So sure. but 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 it initiated really interesting conversations. So that that was a great experience. It really was. And and, and we, we would also have them. Uh, we would do a class project, a class film every semester. Uh, that related to, uh, well, the first one was um, realism. We, we divided into three groups. It was realism, uh, uh, abstraction, and then non-representational. So we had three, three right. groups, and they all had to dictate to me how they wanted their images uh, transformed according to their group. So the first class, first first classes. So I would, you know, put them all on video, just staring into the camera, and stating the name. And then that would be the basis of it. And and throughout the uh, the uh, semester, we would uh, uh, develop the uh, their their own images, their self portraits, actually, based on uh, their categories. So that was that was a lot of fun too. I was going to say that sounds like an interesting class. That's more interesting than mine <laughs> when I teach it. <laughs> Which is a lot of papers. Well, no, but I, we go to a lot of museums. Yeah, but I, the, the papers, yeah, the, 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 I, the papers were there. They were tough, you know. They were, they were tough, but but it was but it was important because I really got to see what students are thinking, you know, and that kind of thing. So it was good. Right. We're moving into the last quarter hour, and I told you, you know, we were, this is the point where you could talk about the future. But I forgot. There's another another something that because it's been so long since I've done an exit interview, is I would also ask. And here's an opportunity. You're leaving. 
right? You got 45 years of experience in this institution. Uh, what would you like to share with those of us who are, whatever you want to say, left behind uh, that you, you know, what you would, you know, think we should know or, or things that we should think about uh, while we continue to do this kind of work? Uh, well, I think. So either. Yeah. I was going to say either way, future or, you know, lessons learned you'd like to share. Well, I think, you know, and I, I bet I've been looking back. I mean, one of the things, you know, uh, in the last month or so, be, you know, before my last day, I, I was putting putting together uh, organizing material and, and deciding what to, to keep, what, you know, for, for my successors and especially the digital files, the digital files, video and, and the uh, photography. It was like a... You know, Naturally, there was a lot of duplication, and so I wanted to clean that up. So I didn't want to burden uh, my successes with that. Um, but in, in going through all of that material, uh, you know, like over, you know, it, it, it's actually over 20 years because I had a lot of video from uh, prior, prior to that. Um, you know, I realized, I said, you know, it's really simple because the people here, I mean, basically we're all, you know, we've got the same objective. We want to a mission objective and so on. It's really to help people. And, and whether, whether you're helping students directly, you know, uh, student affairs or, or academic affairs, faculty members, or your the support services in the college helping, you know, others help people. Uh, it's, you know, we're all, we're all here in, in, in the, with the same objective. And it's just simply to help people. And I thought that was a really beautiful thing. And, and, uh, and I, and I just, you know, you know, people get into, you know, of course, there are disagreements and sometimes, and, you know, as you well know, committees and so on. Um, but ultimately, you know, if we, we step back and we look at what, what, we, what we're doing here, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a really, it's a really good thing. And, and uh, I'm really grateful that uh, I was able to be a part of it. Yeah, you know, I, I always tell people the story of, when uh, when 9/11 happened, and you would go to these cocktail parties, and people would ask you, "What do you do?" And uh, you know, people did. You know, you'd meet all kinds of people depending on what party you're at. But at the time, I think I, w I was running an after-school program in the Bronx, and uh, everybody, people would get so excited and say, "Like, oh wow, that's really like something that's worth doing." And uh, that's how I feel about you know the work we do here. Is that I don't have, you know, I'm I, I'm doing good. I'm working with students who remind me of me, who look like me. I'm helping them to the next place. I mean, whatever, you know. I mean, obviously the the mission continues to evolve. When you were first here, we were the co-op college, right. and it was very focused on jobs, right? Getting people into a job. Then uh, under uh, you know President Mello. Uh, it got very focused on transfer mm -hmm. and schol scholastic. Remember Peter Katopis, Mr. Uh, in, you know, PhD in English, reading two books at a time. <laughs> but now we're back to the jobs thing. But it, for me, it's 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 all the same thing. It's that preparing my students as best I can for the for their adventure when they leave here, and uh, make them competitive when they apply for jobs when they try to get promoted. Uh, whatever they choose to do, you know, I certainly have not. I think there was a time when I first started teaching photography. I, I wanted everybody to be a photographer. You know, I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. But I've learned since then. It's like, you know, everybody doesn't have to be a photographer, even though everybody now actually everybody is. Yeah, with a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> with their phones. Do you see? Do you feel the same way about about the way I feel about photography and the advent of the. Uh, you know, of the phone pictures and Instagram, you feel the same way about like filmmaking at the advent of, you know, things like TikTok and Snapchat and, and of course the uh, Instagram videos. There's like a button just for videos all day. Yeah. You could just, what do you, I mean, is that, do you feel like the, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's like anything, you know, it's, it's, it's the, 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 again, getting back to technology, uh, you know the, the the advances in the iPhone, you know phone technology in terms of image uh, capturing is, is phenomenal, um, right. and it's you know we always said you know even before this phase, 
you know, it's not the camera, it's the photographer. So whether you have a you have a tiny point and shoot or a, a giant, uh, you know, a medium format camera or 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 a, or a phone, you can understand the relationship of the subject to light and so on. Whether you, whether you're conscious of it or not, a good photographer is going to, you know, get that picture and know how to capture a picture. I've I've seen phenomenal uh, iPhone pictures, and you know, you could you could make. I've th- actually, I've, you know, I started uh, shooting. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we shot, you know, recently um, on uh, on the iPhone uh, in, uh, you know, for the college uh, because uh, Carlos, uh, Carlos Ferrer, who was, who's, uh, just, you know, is taking over the video uh, uh, function, uh, my video function, um, he, uh, he uh, had a terrible uh, accident. It was a skateboard accident. <laughs> So he, he smashed the heck out of his uh, elbow, uh, had surgery, and, you know, could, could barely move it. He's, 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 he's come a long way now in terms of uh, physical therapy. But we continued uh, to shoot, uh, for example, those, uh, you know, welcome back to campus, uh, uh, you know, videos uh, about the ventilation. And there's another one about the cleaning. And all, all that was shot on uh, an iPhone. Um, and you wouldn't know the difference. It is extraordinary. So, you know, in terms of TikTok or, or whatever, or Instagram or anything, hey, it, you know, if, if uh, it's, it's just, it's the format. I, I don't, if your message is, is, is if the message is what's, what, what interests me. If, it, if it's a good message, let's go for it. You know, I'm not going to hold any, only thing against the, uh, the format. Before we started the show, we were talking a little bit again about your uh, about your Squirrel Budo videos, and you were saying like I got a lot of them, and there are more coming. So is that what you're going to do now that you uh, you move on? You're going to well, focus on your uh, no. filmmaking? No, they, 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 the Squirrel Budos. Uh, they well, I, I described how they started, but uh, and then after a while, they became uh, therapy for me. <laughs> <laughs> because it was something I, that's therapeutic to watch and, and, and that because it was therapy in the sense of oh i finished i finished something on my own you know right uh because i've been working on a uh, a documentary film about stuyvesant town for for a number of years uh eight years or so uh and uh and just it, it's a little frustrating because you know it's, it's a long and drawn out process you know well i had my day job so you know i, I so the time that I that I had to devote to it was limited, but but I like finishing things, and uh, so that's that's how I, I kept going with Squirrel Buddha because it, it really was therapeutic. Oh, I finished something. I'll post this here. It's done. All right, move on to the next one. But yeah, I now that I'm retired, I'm going to finish the documentary, uh, and uh, but that's not to say that I'm not that I'm, I'm leaving Squirrel Buddha behind because no, I have I have tons of material that I can use. And uh, and now people expect they expect more. I see that I, you know I get emails all the time. Where's the next squirrel video coming out? That kind of thing. People do love squirrels. A lot of people hate squirrels, uh, but uh, but I love I love them. And uh, I guess the other people that do love squirrels have come out and said admitted that they love squirrels. Well, I joke I joke with you. I call we call the house up here Squirrel Ranch because. They were the most they're the most prevalent animal on the property. They were living in my garage at one point and left but they left a lot of stuff behind, as you can imagine. And uh, I think I think we've got them out of the house now. But uh, you know, and they and like you know, kind of almost religiously violate my wife's plants at the end of every fall. You know, when when they're looking for, when they're still looking for things, and <laughs> they have a purpose. But, uh, you know, it's fun. You walk outside and it's like, oh, squirrel. And there's like two or three. They, they move in packs. You know, and we got, a, oh. we got a fox around here, too. So they at one point, one point they, were, they had predators. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. You know? Uh, but, you know, it's, it's funny. But the, in a way, the twain has met because, uh, you know, because the Stuyvesant Town documentary, right? Stuyvesant Town, you know, for those who are not familiar with it, you know, it's has a big, huge housing project after the war. It's 11,000 apartments uh, with Peter Cooper Village. Uh, 
but there was a no there was a no pet policy you wouldn't st uh, metlife uh, owned it and they were very strict and there was a no pet policy so what happened is over the years this is my theory by the way over the years as uh, partners began to die you know you had the widows or the widowers and there were no pets allow allowed so what what did they do they started seeking right. consolation in in uh, the wildlife out there and and there were squirrels so the squirrel population ballooned and uh, uh so that's probably what got me thinking about squirrels you know always in the background and uh and then when i started working out in the field and it was a natural so but here's, here's a funny thing when when uh, a lot of the interviews i did uh in fact all of the interviews just about all of them i've done for uh the documentary you know, I asked them all about their experience uh, living in, in Stuyvesant Town and, and, and so on over the years. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of the original tenants uh, uh, are in it uh, before before they they passed away, and uh, I would save the to me the question. This is the last question I would ask when I said, "Okay, I have to ask this of everybody, so please bear with me." You know, this is a hot button topic. You know, I'd say, "What do you think of the squirrels?" And, <laughs> And then the reactions, whether it's uh, Carolyn Maloney or this or that, you know, the, re the reactions are hilarious. You know, just hilarious. And they were, ugh. They were, and, 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 you know, Scott Stringer was shocked. He's like, he didn't know what to say because he was expecting a real tough question, you know. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. So we're, gonna, we're actually going to show the trailer for your film, uh, the Stuyvesant film, and it's, yeah, uh, it's, a, what, it's a couple of minutes. It's about two and a half minutes. Yeah. A couple of minutes. So we've got about a minute or so to say our say our say whatever you're going to say. Any last anybody? Well, I want to thank, thank everybody. Any last let me just words? fill you in on the on the Stuyvesant Town film. There, you know, I I won't go into what, how I got yeah. involved with it, but but uh, it, there are three really important elements to 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 the film. What I call the three pillars. Uh, there's uh, the historical importance uh architectural importance design importance and social importance uh this trailer focuses on on one on the historical it's sort of like mills the historical and the social and it, and it really has to do with uh, the racist policies uh that metlife uh, uh employed uh in the beginning uh of stuyvesant and, and the conflict the bitter conflicts that that uh, that that arose from that and ultimately the nation's first fair housing law came about. All right. Well, that's a nice setup for the video. And I just want to thank you for coming back after your official retirement date uh, to give us the exit interview. Like I said, not we, not everybody takes us up on the offer. Well, thank you, Hugo. So uh, you've been watching. Yeah, you're welcome, William. And uh, you've been watching what's going on. I'm your host, Hugo Fernandez, here on LaGuardia Web Radio. Uh, WLGR, and our guest today has been uh, Mr. William Kelly, who is our former editorial managing director of marketing and communications. He retired officially on January 21st, and he was kind enough to come back and give us his exit interview. I hope uh, folks learn about it. And uh, we've got another show coming up at one o'clock within the hour with uh, uh, executive director of DEI, Wendy Nicholson. So maybe you'll come back for that. But let's, uh, I'm going to turn it over to my engineer, Mr. Pope, who is going to show us what William will be doing now that he doesn't work with us anymore. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for everyone. watching. Thanks for listening.